I would say things I wish I knew okay. when I was learning how to draw. Hey guys, how's it going? So in today's video, what I want to do is have my brother here, Jason. He's also an artist. He's really good at drawing characters in a really awesome animated style, but he's also really good at drawing in a realistic style as well. And he has an entire course on Udemy all about how to draw using paper and pencil, as well as his own YouTube channel that covers a lot of other artistic topics. And I'll put the link to that in the description. So what we wanted to cover is some things that we wish we had known when we started becoming artists and drawing and really getting serious about it that we wish there's someone had tell, told us or that we had realized before we spent so many hours and time doing stuff that, you know, could have been done a lot more efficiently. So I'm gonna let Jason go ahead and start with the first one. All right, so number one we think is copying. Um, I wish I knew how important it is to copy other artists a lot of people tell you that's super bad. I mean, like, I'm sure you've been told a lot throughout the years, like, from teachers and stuff, that copying other artists is really bad and it's plagiarism and all these things. And, like, yeah, you don't want to take, um... Steal. Like, steal, yeah. Like, you don't want to steal their art and, like, say, like, this is my art, I created this. <clears throat> but it's totally okay to copy. So, like, if there's an animation artist that you really like or a uh, digital painter or whatever, like it's totally okay to try to copy their paintings and emulate it. And if, if they teach exactly how they do their style, how they paint that style, or their thought process and drawing, you should try to copy that. Um, that's one of the best ways to learn how to draw or paint or whatever it is you're trying to do is to emulate other artists. I think that in my experience, I've seen the pushback against this mostly actually come from students and artists themselves feeling like they want to do their own art and yeah. like they, they're kind of like this ego thing sort of where they don't want to, they want to feel like they're an independent doing their own thing sort of thing, which is fine. That's great that you want to make your own art, but you're going to have to relearn all the things that people before you have already learned that you could just take from them instead of trying to muscle your way through and do it on your own because it's going to take you years to get to that point when there's people who have gone before you who have already developed and done a lot of great things. So which that can, can I just throw one more yeah. thing in about that? Which and that's like another thing is like like every great artist or entrepreneur or whatever it is, like they're all standing on the shoulders of giants. Like, you know, like you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Like you can just learn from someone else and then add on top of that. You, by the way, you, you keep saying like a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> just get over it, man. <laughs> Number, Number two. two. Alright, so the second one is that tools don't matter. Um when I started, I had this idea in my head that, man, if only I could, if you, it started with Prismacolor pencils, if only I had Prismacolor pencils, I could make really good art. And then it was, if only I had a tablet, I could make really cool digital art. And then I got a bamboo tablet and it was, if only I had a tablet where I could draw on the screen, I could make really good art. And I realized that you can make really good art with whatever tools you have. Tools can make it easier, they can make things more efficient. But if you're relying on your tools to make you a good artist, you're going to be let down. That without learning the fundamentals and the basics and really honing your skills, it doesn't matter if you're painting on the world's best, most expensive tablet ever, your art is still going to suck. And the kind of like the grandfather of digital art, Craig Mullins, who is kind of the first person to really start digital painting using Photoshop, even to this day, he uses a mouse to paint his paintings. Really? Yeah, and you should <laughs> look at them. I'll put some pictures Dude, up while we're talking insane. on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. His art looks like classical artists, beautiful. They look like oil paintings, and he still to this day uses a mouse, which goes to show that you don't need all this fancy stuff to make good art. And then I think a lot of times beginner artists use it as a crutch where they look at their work, they're unsatisfied with it, and they think, oh, well, the reason it's not good is just because I'm not using a tablet like this other great artist was. If I could have that tool, or if I could use these sorts of pencils or markers, if I could have Copic markers, then my art would look like them. And to a degree, your art probably would look like them more if you're trying to emulate a specific style, but the idea that you can't make good art without those things just, it simply isn't true. I mean, there's people who can make amazing art with nothing more than sidewalk chalk, or people who can make amazing art with nothing more than a piece of yeah, I've seen I've seen really cool art on the back of a dirty car window. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. if you understand the fundamentals, then it doesn't matter what tools you have. Yes, they can help make your art better, but that is not the basis for good art. Yeah, tools won't make your art better. 
What are we talking about again? Number, number three. three. So number three is focus on the fundamentals first. And what this means is you're gonna want, before you just jump into some like really crazy advanced stuff, you wanna start learning the fundamentals, things like form and shape and contrast and even things like perspective. Um, because I think a lot of people, they just jump straight into trying to do something big and amazing and it really frustrates them because like, they, they don't understand the process that the artist did to like get to that point, you know, like the, like the layers of like perspective and contrast and understanding about shape and all those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's really important that you at least like study the fundamentals first, even if you're still trying to do some really advanced stuff, but at the same time, you should definitely be doing fundamentals and learning about it. It, um, it in a way, it kind of ties into the first one where we're talking about copying stuff. Um, when you copy stuff, you want to make sure that you're copying with the perspective of, I'm trying to understand how they did this, not just simply replicate the image. Because I know that there's, when I was in high school, there was a lot of other kids who were really, really good at copying a picture exactly. Like almost like a camera, like a camera took right. a picture and then they would just almost and they could, print And they it. could replicate it exactly, but because they didn't understand any of the fundamentals, why they were doing what they did, how the artist got to that conclusion in their art, if you had them draw their own thing out of their own head, it looked horrible. It looked like a kid had drawn it because they didn't really understand what it was they were doing. It was like someone who learned to play a song on the piano perfectly, but they couldn't actually play piano or read music at all. Yeah. You know, they just had memorized the song, but other than that, they couldn't do anything else. Which, if I mean, like, if you want to just learn like some music on the piano, like that's fine. Right. But, like, if you actually want to be a pianist, like you need exactly. to know the fundamentals and under right. have an understanding of what you're playing. Exactly. So like that I say that would tie into that one is that it's even though you're copying, it's important to understand why you're doing what you're doing in order to actually make good art so you don't just have to copy other people's stuff. You can draw out of your head once you get to that level. Number four. Okay. Number, Number four, four. Number four is learn by doing things that you like and that interest you. And what this means is I think it means that when you're practicing the fundamentals or even just copying other artists, like you want to find things that you like and that you're interested in. I see, um, not even I see, like I just know from my experience that a lot of the times I've tried to do things that I really hate, like drawing certain things that I hate or like, um, like anything like that. And it's just, it's kind of miserable, you know, like you feel like you're forcing yourself to do it. Um, so I think it's really important to keep yourself motivated by doing things that you really like. And I think at some point you come to the realization, like, even though like this isn't the funnest thing for me to draw, like just drawing hundreds of human forms, um, you will come to enjoy it in a way because you realize like how important it, important it is. But until you really realize that, um, you, you can really like crush your passion and enthusiasm and your drive to draw or paint or whatever it is by doing things that you really hate. Like, I'm gonna add to that. Um, personally, when I was in college and I was taking drawing classes that were kind of required for the art degree I wanted to get, we had to do so many things that were so boring and yeah, they taught us some things, but I think I would have retained the knowledge way better if it was something that I could understand how it would apply to what I wanted to do. For example, there's one assignment I remember how to do that was horrible. And it was a challenge and like I did it, but it just seemed so uninteresting. And what we had to do is get a paper, we had to go to the bathroom. We literally had to go to the bathroom, grab a paper towel, crumple it up in a big ball, put it on the table, and then draw our crumpled up piece of paper towel and shade it and everything, try and get the lighting as accurate as possible. And it was just like the boringest thing ever. Like who wants to draw a crumpled up piece of paper towel? It's so unmotivating. After you're done with it, it's not even something that you can be really that proud of or excited about. It's, you feel like I did it. I made it look like a crumpled up paper towel, but this isn't really anything that I want to do anything with. And I don't think all of your practices and studies have to be masterful works of art, but I agree that the more you draw things that you find interesting while you're learning the fundamentals, the more motivation you have to do them. To give you some examples, because I think sometimes that can seem kind of like vague, mm -hmm. um, if you're trying to study lighting, the best thing you can do is study from life, is paint things in real life or draw things. 
But draw something that you think is cool. If you have a cool figurine from a movie or TV show you like, set that up in some lighting and try drawing it. Try drawing, if you're really into cars and you're trying to learn perspective, then draw things that are gonna help you pertain to cars instead of just drawing a bunch of cubes. Um, those sort of things are gonna give you the fuel to keep learning the fundamentals when it can start to feel like a grind. And I wish I, wish I had known that because when I was in high school and I was really getting into art, I had a really amazing art teacher who, we had the same art teacher, who was really supportive and she would always try and push me to do these fundamental things and I'd always kind of shrug them off like, ah, like, I don't need that stuff, that stuff's kind of boring. And now that I'm older, I wish I had listened because it would have helped me get so much faster, so much, so much further, so much faster if I had started with that instead of having to go back and relearn a lot of those things that I sort of shrugged off because I thought they were boring. Number, Number five. five. So the last one that I want to talk about is the idea that college is not the only path. For a lot of you, you might already be past that age or you might already be in school, but for some of you, you might still be deciding which direction you want to go or what you're going to do in order to pursue the career you want in art. There could be a lot of pressure from outside influences to feel like the only way to success and the only way to get what you want out of life is to go to college. And I'm here to tell you that is simply not true. When I was in high school and I was deciding what I wanted to do with my life, I knew I really wanted to be an artist, but I felt so much pressure that the only way I was gonna get there is if I went to an expensive art school and that no one would hire me unless I had those credentials. And I remember I was at a comic convention and I was walking around and I ended up talking to an artist named Arthur Soydem, who is the artist who does um, a lot of the, he did like all the Marvel Zombies comic book covers. He did a lot of the Walking Dead comic book covers, an amazing artist. And um, I asked him, you know, what school should I go to to be good at art? And he kind of laughed at me. He's like, dude, don't go to college. It's the worst, worst choice you can make. You're going to get in a ton of debt. They're not going to teach you what you want to know. In today's age, everything you need to know you can learn online through hard work and dedication. And it kind of surprised me because I had been so up to that point, been so set that I'm going to get really good at art, I'm gonna get a, try and get a scholarship, I'm gonna go to art school, and I'm gonna get a job as a concept artist somewhere. And I had just had that path laid out for me. And despite that advice, I still ended up going to college for a while, only to experience for myself that what I said was right. The people around me weren't people who had been working in the industry, or at least not in over a decade, if at all. And I wasn't really getting closer to where I wanted to be, and it was expensive. It was super expensive. And I just realized I know what it is that I want to learn. I know what it is I want to do for a career. And whenever I go home at night after class, I just look up the stuff that I want to know on YouTube or on the internet anyways. And especially today, there's dozens of online courses that cover all these sort of, I mean, we both teach online courses on this topic, but even besides us, there's even more. And they're taught by the best people in the world in a lot of cases. We can access it for a tenth even less of what you would pay for a college degree. Um, so does it say that you should never ever go to college and that's never the right thing to do? For you, it might be. For me, it wasn't. But I just want people to understand it's not the only way. It's not the only path to success and happiness. Jason, he never went to college at all and he's doing really well as an artist and what he enjoys and living a great life. What do you think about college? What what experiences did you have when um, you were in high school that people told you about college? Um, I don't know. Well, everybody thought like being an artist for one was just gonna be like sucky. Like I needed to be something else besides an artist. But even like even with that, like me saying I'm gonna be an artist and I'm not gonna go to college, they're just like what? But like straight out of high school, I got a job with a animation studio, you know, and then from there, like started teaching art. I would. Um, probably say like if somebody was gonna go to college for art I truly believe that for most people it would probably be better for them to just take that money They were gonna spend in college or whatever, you know Or like the money they were gonna pay off their loan while they're working a job while they're going to college And just take that money and instead just go try to find one of your top like ten artists You know and just pay them just be like hey, I'll pay you a thousand dollars a month You know like if you give me like a lesson a month or four lessons a month, you know, like what, whatever they're worth. I don't know what they're going to be worth, but, um, I would say that your money would be more well spent doing that than going to college for art. But and honestly, if you decide not to go down the college route, it's probably going to be an uphill battle. Like it was for us when we made the decision not to go. 
and there's going to be plenty of people around you who are more than willing to tell you how stupid you are, how it's such a bad idea, how you're just going to be a failure, and you kind of just have to deal with that and push through it, but we're two examples that it's totally possible. We have great lives and we do what we really love for a living and have the freedom to do you know, do whatever we want and spend our time how we want all by doing art. So, um, and I think it's also important to add that if you don't go to college, I mean, like, it's not like you don't have to work if you go to college, but if you don't go to college, like, you definitely are going to have to work, like, and motivate yourself and make yourself do things. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Once again, check out Jason's channel. I'll have the link in the description. And if you enjoyed this, you thought it was valuable, be sure to like, leave a comment on what type of videos you'd like to see in the future. Or if there's something that you wish you had known when you were a younger artist, you're someone who's a little bit more experienced, leave a comment and let other people know in the comments below. And then be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. All subscribers can take any of my Udemy courses for only $14.99, which is way cheaper than what they're normally listed at. And on top of that, there's a full 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like it, I won't be offended. Don't sweat it. And full responsive support from me and an entire Facebook group for students only. So be sure to check that out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. I never say bye. I only say I'll see you in the next one. Then just cut it.